Hi, I'm Nathan Lane, and you're watching the Broadway.com show. Now go out and do something constructive. Welcome to the Broadway.com show, your weekly guide to everything happening on the Great White Way, or as we like to think of it, the place where theater nerds take a break from YouTubing fierce musical theater belting. Let's get started with the news. What's the buzz, Beth? Two-time Tony winner Sutton Foster is poised to return to Broadway this spring in Violet, a show that will reunite the star with composer Janine Tesori, who also wrote Thoroughly Modern Millie and Shrek. No word yet on whether Violet on Broadway will be a production or a reprise of last summer's acclaimed Encores concert, but who cares? Sutton on Broadway is a guaranteed must-see. Your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man will take his final swing through New York City's Times Square before landing in Las Vegas. Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark, the most expensive theatrical production in history, is set to shutter in January at Broadway's Foxwoods Theatre. The comic book inspired show, featuring music and lyrics by 22-time Grammy Award winners Bono and The Edge, started performances in November 2010 and played an almost six-month controversy-ridden preview period before opening. Here's hoping Spidey's Sin City web is a little less tangled. The maggots are headed to the movies. The Broadway musical Matilda will be adapted for the screen. Matilda director Matthew Warchus revealed that Tony winner Dennis Kelly, who penned the book for the show, will write the screenplay and collaborate with composer Tim Minchin to decide if extra songs will be written to boost the film version. Okay, two things. First, more songs for Mrs. Wormwood. And second, Queen Leslie better be a part of this. An Oscar-winning movie about the Bard is headed to the London stage. Shakespeare in Love, the 1998 hit starring Gwyneth Paltrow, Joseph Fiennes, and Judi Dench will open at the Noel Coward Theatre in July 2014. In a fascinating twist, the script is being adapted by Billy Elliot's Lee Hall, not famed playwright Tom Stoppard, who shared an Oscar with the screenplay. We're rooting for Dench to reprise her role as Queen Elizabeth and prove that eight minutes of brilliance can win an Olivier as well as an Academy Award. Extra, extra, the Newsies are hitting the road. The Broadway.com Audience Choice Award winning musical is setting up a national tour, which will officially premiere in Philadelphia next October. The first leg of the tour will hit 25 cities, giving America a history lesson about old time in New York City, some amazing Alan Menken, Jack Feldman tunes, and an endless flurry of high kicking chorus boys. Go Newsies! Hi, I'm Derek Jeter, and you're watching the Broadway.com show. Our Tweet of the Week comes courtesy of superstar Tony and Oscar-winning lyricist Tim Rice, who wrote, Amazing number of tweeters think they are the first to suggest Tim Curry and I open an Indian restaurant. Actually, not a bad idea. Must call TC. You can catch the Evita Libretis latest show From Here to Eternity in London's West End and follow him on Twitter at Sir Tim Rice. This week, Hugh Jackman revealed that he is very interested in taking on the role of sexy Latin lover Aldofo in the Drowsy Chaperone film. So that got us to thinking about what other juicy musical roles would we like to see Jackman sink his teeth into. Here's our high five. At number five is Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. We'd love to see Hugh Jackman take on the role of suave conman Lawrence Jameson and get dirty rotten. Our number four choice is another slick conman, Harold Hill from The Music Man. Till there was Hugh, we think a Jackman-led remake of the classic musical would be the opposite of Shapoopy. At number three, we'd love to see Jackman, Where You Are. We mean in a big screen adaptation of Kiss of the Spider Woman as tortured, imaginative prisoner Molina. Coming in at number two is Mr. Applegate in Damn Yankees. Isn't it about time we saw Jackman really show off his comedy chops as a devil disguised as a businessman? The answer is yes. And for our top choice, George in Sunday in the Park with George, Let's get right to the pointillism. We think Hugh Jackman would be a perfect fit as the painter in this complex Sondheim musical. Thumbs up to Sarah Jessica Parker, who is currently starring in Manhattan Theatre Club's off-Broadway production of Amanda Peet's The Commons of Pensacola. We caught a preview of the show and thought the Sex and the City alum's performance was nuanced, authentic, and that she more than held her own with her stage mum, Tony winner Blythe Danner. A super stylish hat off to the Emmy winner for keeping in touch with her theater roots. We're giving a big thumbs down this week to you, America. Well, at least the four million of you who are actually watching The X Factor. Broadway alum and country gal Rachel Potter was sent packing this week in a shocking double elimination. 
From Beyonce's Irreplaceable to Shania Twain's From This Moment On, Potter has been knocking them dead with her show-stopping performances. But really, it's okay. We're not even crying for the Evita bet. Try to name one X Factor winner. Go ahead, try. Bet you can't. This week's Hot Shot is a fabulous first look at a couple we can't wait to see on Broadway. Courtney Reed as Princess Jasmine and Adam Jacobs as the title character in Aladdin. The stage adaptation of Disney's beloved animated film is currently enjoying a run at the Ed Mervish Theatre in Toronto. Get set to watch Romance Bloom right here on Broadway at the New Amsterdam Theatre beginning February 26th. It's time to smack down. Last week, we wanted to know who you are most excited to see return to the Great White Way, Patrick Stewart or Ian McKellen? The results are in, and 66% of you Trekkies chose Patrick Stewart. Sorry, Sir Ian. Now for this week's SmackDown. We're gonna get a little crazy, and we're gonna focus our attention on the role of Fanny Bryce. Tony nominee Leah Michelle is a self-admitted Barbara Streisand fangirl. Even her character on Glee, Rachel Berry, wants to be the next Babs, and has been vying for the coveted role of Fanny Bryce in a fictional Funny Girl revival. So we want to know, what do you think? A showdown between Fanny Bryce, hopefully Michelle, against legend herself, Barbara Streisand, may just be too ridiculous to pass up. Which of these two songstresses would you choose? Fresh Face Michelle or the original Real Deal Streisand? Tweet your vote to Broadway.com with the hashtag BeWaySmackdown and tune in next week to find out the winner. Hello, I'm Stephen Fry. You're watching the Broadway.com show. Billy Crystal is back on Broadway with his Tony-winning solo show, 700 Sundays, a stirring look at the legendary comedian, actor, and author's life growing up in Long Island. In 700 Sundays, Crystal says that growing up, he wanted to be either a Yankee or a comedian, or a funny Yankee. We couldn't resist asking some of his famous friends on opening night about their childhood goals in this week's pop poll. I wanted to be a dancer on Broadway. A fashionista, I wanted to own my own store. I wanted to be a Yankee. Uh, I never wanted to be a comedian because I wasn't funny, but I, I wanted to be a Yankee and I've been fortunate. At one point I want to be a Met because they stunk and I stunk, so I figured maybe I can do it. When I grew up, I, I wanted to, to write and you know I'm doing that now. I wanted to be a writer when I was really little. And then of course, like every kid, I wanted to be a marine biologist at one point. I think everyone thinks that. I wanted to bang the Yankees, but it didn't happen because I was fat. Our star of the week is doing the opposite of making a killing on Broadway. Jefferson Mays plays a serial victim who dies over and over and over as eight members of the doomed Dysquith family in A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. The talented Tony winner's performance is comic, tragic, detailed, and altogether delightful. Jefferson, we're so glad you're being buried in accolades. There's no one we'd rather watch die. And you're our star of the week. Thank you for watching us talk to you about Broadway again this week. We'll leave you with a peek at the new off-Broadway musical, Little Miss Sunshine, now playing at Second Stage Theater. See you next time. For the first time in my life. We're going somewhere. For the first time in my life. We're all together. For the first time in my life. I love a pageant. Next time I'll use a gun instead. We are leaving.